I hate to perpetuate the use of cliched expressions, but short and sweet works way too well here. We're talking about a Wake Definitive Edition, which I'm only naming in full because you can't find the damn thing in a search engine otherwise. Once you find it though, you'll find it's on Windows, Mac OS, Steam OS, Linux, available for purchase on Steam, iOS, Android, and... Amazon. I don't know how that works, quite frankly, but it's there if you want it. While we're in that territory, the game has English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, Russian, and Brazilian Portuguese language support. Quite an impressive amount for a game that only costs a few quid. Which may be explained by the fact the game is around half an hour long. This makes more sense when you learn that A Week came from a game jam, where people gather to make a game in a severely compressed time frame. Say, a weekend, or sometimes just a day. There's only so much that can be accomplished in that time, so a linear type of game such as point and click adventure seems like an odd choice. Naturally, or perhaps thankfully, there's a twist. Let me put you in the picture. The story begins as Mark wakes up with a start. He sees his partner Caroline, the caravan they're staying in. All seems normal. That dream though, that sensation of drowning, it felt so real. Mm, probably nothing. Their caravan apparently lacks a toilet, so he heads out into the surrounding forest to find a bush. As soon as he gets there, a dart hits his neck and he falls unconscious. This time he wakes up much more slowly. In the trunk of a car. Okay, so either we've been abducted or Smokey the Bear has gone postal. The car reaches its destination and Mark begins to wonder what his captor's plans are. A question definitively answered when the car begins to fill with water. He laments, he ponders, he panics, and eventually, he dies. So the story begins as Mark wakes up with a start. He sees his partner Caroline, the caravan they're staying in, and he starts getting some severe deja vu. Yep, you're in a time loop. Why? Don't know. How do you get out? Don't know but not getting abducted and killed seems like a good place to start. That's your main game loop right there. Try and change your situation to prevent your grisly demise. In terms of a game jam concept, it's a pretty good one. After all, there's only four screens to worry about if you include the trunk of the car. However, if this had been nothing more than take the correct path to not die, I doubt I would have been impressed. That's where the game gets clever. For starters, it breaks away from something which I think everyone, myself included, seem to have simply accepted as part of adventure games. The idea that your protagonist has infinitely deep pockets. I'm not saying it's a bad trope, it's simply one I'd never really considered up until now. In fact, I'm struggling to think of another game that breaks this trope except for some not that particular item please I have weak noodle arms situations. This is the same genre where you can shove an entire ladder down your trousers after all. Point is, there's a bunch of items you can grab to try and change your fate, but you can only carry four at one time. You can discard something you've already picked up, but if you do, you won't get that item back until the loop resets. The game does back up into the trope a little by having a jerry can take up as much space as a kitchen knife, but they're not going for realism here, I don't think. I think they're trying to make you consider which items and which combination of items you'll need to survive. Otherwise, you'd just pick them all up and then trial and error your way to victory. Not that trial and error isn't the order of the day here, it's generally how a time loop mechanic works, but it feels different. You're not safe scumming to try every combination brute force style, you're picking your arsenal before you head out. By head out, I mean trigger the abduction sequence, because you will do that once you find out how. You already know how this goes, head into the bushes, dart to the neck. The initial panic will give way to morbid fascination, the thought that this time I'll get him will take over. A starkly different reaction to that of the protagonist himself as he starts to crack from experiencing death after death. And you would, wouldn't you? I don't think for a second I'd come out of this scenario sane if I ever came out at all. You even get the option to tell Caroline that you're in a time loop by the third time round. Not that she believes you, of course. The fact that this mental fatigue is shown to set in is a nice touch, even if it is within a severely compressed timescale. Because I wasn't lying earlier, the game is unlikely to take you more than half an hour. It's almost like a choose your own adventure or fighting fantasy book with a point and click in their face. And no option to keep your thumb on the last page so you can go back if you made the right choice. Don't lie, we all did it. There's many possibilities on how you can change or vary your untimely demise, and upon further analysis, they aren't quite tightly controlled, but it feels more free and open than that. I mean, there's only one verb for each hotspot. That should make this game feel the exact opposite of free and open. And yet it works for me. That said, why does everything need to be clicked twice? Once to see the hotspot name, once more to interact. Could we not have the name appear when we hover over the hotspot? It would make it much easier to use inventory items if you got the name of whatever you could use it on. 
Oh yeah, and there's my usual bugbear about dragging items to use them instead of clicking ones to select them, but the icons and hotspots are big enough that it doesn't really become irritating. Plus, it's one of the few situations where the short length of the game is a good thing. Less time equals fewer item interactions equals less frustration. You can take any one of those as the obligatory nitpick for this episode. Anyway, the developers suggest playing the game in one sitting, and I had no problem managing that. Again, partly due to the very short length. I'm not trying to emphasise that as a negative, I just don't want you to be under any illusions about what this game is. There's a puzzle with many ways to fail and, as far as I know, only one way to win. Hopefully that should be enough to let you decide if you want to pick this up or not, but I'll leave you with a suggestion. If you can, maybe get a grip together on this one. As I've hopefully made clear, you'll need to line up something else to do afterwards, or it's an early night for everyone, but I think a bit of discussion could help make this even more entertaining. I'm fortunate enough to have a group of friends who were willing to play her story with me in this fashion, and it was great to hear their ideas of what we could look into next, how those ideas differed from my own, and pondering whether it was more or less fun having played through the game myself already. I had to give some very considered answers to their questions that night, let me tell you. Granted, it's not the best example, there's a lot more to go into there. Her story is open to interpretation in a way that Awake is not. It doesn't have that kind of depth. As I said, there's basically one puzzle to solve and that's it. You're not looking for answers here, you're trying to survive. But if I found it entertaining enough to put into video form, maybe you'll find it interesting enough to play. Hello, thanks for watching to the end. If you're so inclined to leave a comment, a like, a dislike, whatever you fancy, please do. Or if you really like what I'm doing here, I do have a Patreon if you want to contribute money. Links in the description. Thanks again and cheerio. This is where I